Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem A3 from Putnam 2023. Determine the smallest positive real number R such that there exist differentiable functions f and g satisfying these five different conditions. f of 0 is positive, g of 0 is 0, f prime of 0 in absolute value is less than or equal to absolute value of g of x, g prime of x is less than or equal to f of x in absolute value, and f of r is equal to 0. So we're going to discuss how we can approach this problem, how we can obtain the solution, and what is the thought process behind getting to a solution. So the first thing that I did when I looked at the problem was, can I come up with examples of functions that satisfy this? If you look at the third and fourth condition, sine and cosine satisfy this property derivative of sine is cosine derivative of cosine is negative sine so if I take sine and cosine they satisfy third and fourth property do they satisfy the first and second property yes we can take f of x equals cosine of x f of 0 is 1 and we can take g of x equals sine of x so these two satisfy A, B, C, D. And in fact, the first place that cosine is 0 is pi over 2. So this is the first place that it is 0. So that means R is at most pi over 2. So we have an example that this is equal to pi over 2. Then I tried a couple different examples of uh, linear functions or quadratic functions, and none of them really gave me something better than pi over 2. So then I suspected that perhaps the answer is in fact pi over 2. So let me tell you how I approach these kinds of problems. One of the things that we usually do when we are dealing with inequalities and derivatives is to use this fact. So if you have f of x is less than or equal to g of x, then you can integrate both sides of the inequality. So integral of f of x is going to be less than or equal to integral of g of x as long as you're going from a smaller value to a larger value. So I was trying to get to something like that. So looking at f prime less than or equal to g and g prime less than or equal to f, if you integrate both sides, it doesn't give you a whole lot but let's do that and see what we get. So we get integral of absolute value of f prime dx is less than or equal to integral of absolute value of g of x dx. What interval is a good interval to choose? Probably 0 to r and see what we get. So 0 to r on this side. Now integral of absolute value is greater than or equal to absolute value of integral. So we get something like this on the left and on the right we just keep it as it was. Integral of derivative is just the integrand, so that's f of r minus f of 0. And this would have to be less than or equal to absolute value of integral of absolute value of g of x dx. It doesn't really quite give me what I want. This is 0, and this is f of 0. So it didn't give me quite uh, what I want. Then I tried the same thing for the other inequality. It didn't give me um, anything very helpful. Then I decided to try other types of functions. So maybe f times g. I took the derivative of that. Derivative of that is f prime g plus f g prime. And if I use the inequalities that they gave me, this gives me less than or equal to f prime is less than g. So that's less than or equal to g squared and then plus f squared. Then I tried f squared plus g squared to see what I get. So I took the derivative of that and absolute value of that. That's f f prime twice that plus twice g g prime. And then this is less than or equal to twice absolute value of f. And I'm going to replace f prime with a g. And I'm going to replace g prime with f. This would give me 4 absolute value of f g. So this is interesting. It gave me something similar to what I had started with. Absolute value of derivative of fg is less than or equal to f squared plus g squared. Absolute value of derivative of f squared plus g squared is less than or equal to 4fg, except with the coefficient of 4. Then I decided maybe to look at f over g. f over g, if you take the derivative of that, we get f prime g minus g prime f over g squared which is less than or equal to. So using the triangle inequality, we get f prime g plus g prime f over g squared. And that's less than or equal to, f prime is less than or equal to g. So this would be g squared. And g prime is less than or equal to f. So that would be f squared. So that's g squared here. Now, if you look at this inequality, this is f over g prime less than or equal to 1 plus 
f over g squared. Although this inequality might be helpful, but there is an issue here. The issue here is that we have g at the bottom, which could be 0. So that's a little bit of a problematic issue. But one of my very smart students, in fact, suggested a very good idea here. So if you look at this inequality, this motivates the tangent inverse. If you look at this inequality, you get this is less than or equal to 1. That's exactly the derivative of tangent inverse. If you look at the tangent inverse of f over g, derivative of that is exactly what I have here. So that's less than or equal to 1. But I still have the issue of 0 at the bottom. How do we resolve that issue? Well, instead of doing f over g, we could do g over f. So how do we now uh, go about solving the problem? So define this function tangent inverse of g over f and then take the derivative of this one we can take the derivative of this over the interval from 0 to r so this would be derivative of g over f divided by 1 plus g over f squared so this is equal to and I'm going to put the absolute value at the bottom I get 1 plus g squared over f squared on top I get f squared at the bottom g prime f minus g f prime and then we take the absolute value which is less than or equal to f squared cancel we get f squared plus g squared at the bottom and then we get absolute value of g prime f plus absolute value of g f prime which is less than or equal to f squared plus g squared over f squared plus g squared which is 1. This is true for every x from 0 all the way to r because we know r is the first positive zero of f okay so this is nice because of the inequality that i have here i can apply integral now so i can say integral from zero to r of derivative of tan inverse of g over f dx i'm using the fact that absolute value of integral is less than or equal to integral of absolute value then we are going to replace the integrand by its maximum which is 1 so this would be integral from 0 to 1 of 1 dr and that is what r so what is the integral on the left integral on the left is tan inverse of g over f evaluated at r minus tan inverse of g over f evaluated at zero by the fundamental theorem of calculus okay so this is really nice because this guy because f is zero at r this guy is plus or minus pi over two minus this guy is just zero so this gives us r is greater than or equal to pi over two except there's one issue with this argument and the issue is if you look at g over f at r this is going to give us so basically tangent inverse of that is in fact plus or minus pi over 2 unless g of r is also 0 so is it possible that g of r is also 0 well if g of r is 0 then we are kind of really stuck and we can't really argue this way so let's see what happens so then I decided to use some of the other things that we got earlier so if you look at the things that we got earlier we got derivative of f squared plus g squared is less than or equal to 4 absolute value of fg so f squared plus g squared derivative of that is less than or equal to 4 absolute value of fg and this is also an absolute value now there is a relation between f squared plus uh, g squared and its derivative. And by AMGM, we can get that relation. Notice that at r, both f and g are 0. So what does this inequality give us? It tells us f squared plus g squared prime is less than or equal to twice f squared plus g squared and also minus f squared plus g squared prime is less than or equal to twice f squared plus g squared. So these are the two things we get. Now if you look at the first one, which again we could do something similar for the second one as well, then we can do f squared plus g squared prime minus 2 
f squared plus g squared. This is less than or equal to 0. Now we're going to multiply by the integrating factor. The integrating factor is e to the power of negative 2x. So if we do the derivative of e to the negative 2x times f squared plus g squared, this is going to be, and this is the integrating factor, e to the power of negative 2x times negative 2, so that's the derivative of e to the power of negative 2x, times f squared plus g squared plus e to the power of negative 2x times derivative of f squared plus g squared. Now, I know f squared plus g squared, in, uh, derivative of that is less than or equal to twice f squared plus g squared. So this means if I factor e to the power of negative 2x, I would get f, f squared plus g squared prime minus twice f squared plus g squared. By the inequality that we got up there, this is less than or equal to 0, which means e to the power of negative 2x times f squared plus g squared is decreasing. Well, let's see what we get here. Now, the last uh, value of this, e to the power of negative 2r times f squared of r plus g squared of r, that is exactly 0 because f and g are both 0. The first value is e to the power of 0, f squared of 0 plus g squared of 0, which is something that is positive. So does that violate what we got? Well, unfortunately, it doesn't because it is decreasing. Let's try the other inequality and see what we get for the other one. The other one, the integrating factor, and I'm talking about this inequality. The integrating factor is e to the power of 2x. So we have this. We have 0 is less than or equal to f squared plus g squared prime plus twice f squared plus g squared. So if you do the derivative of e to the 2x times f squared plus g squared, you would get e to the 2x times 2 f squared plus g squared plus e to the 2x and then derivative of f squared plus g squared. So what is this quantity? This quantity is greater than or equal to 0 by what we see right here. So that means e to the power of 2x times f squared plus g squared is in fact increasing. Now let's evaluate the endpoints and see what they are. e to the power of 2r uh, times f of r, f squared of r plus g squared of r. Because g of r and f of r are both 0, that's exactly 0. But the initial value e to the power of 0, f of 0 squared plus g of 0 squared, that is just f of 0 squared, which is positive. So at 0, it is positive. At r, it is 0, so it cannot be increasing, which means g of, z, g of r is not 0, which means when I do the tangent inverse of g of r over f of r, which is really, if I were to be more rigorous, this is really just the limit of g of x over tan inverse of g of x over f of x as x approaches r from the left. This is exactly plus or minus pi over 2, which means pi over 2 is the answer. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out the rest of the videos on my channel. I will see you in the next video.